Welcome everybody. Glad you could join us today. Let's talk a little bit about what we'll be doing today. I'm going to introduce you to jQuery and Apex, but I'm not going to do it as I would to a group of new programmers, because you're not. You're database developers, and that gives you an edge over new developers. So I'm going to leverage that fact and introduce you to jQuery and Apex through a series of analogies that relate critical concepts back to what you already know in the database. I think you'll be surprised at how similar these technologies can actually be. The first analogy, a web page is like a data set. As database developers, we're used to data, all kinds of it. But we rarely think of HTML web pages as just another data set. We see something like this, and we flip out. Why? Because the data doesn't look quite right. It's foreign and out of our comfort zone. When we see data that looks like this, we're happy. It takes us very little time to understand it. In fact, let's prove that and take a moment to get to know this data a little bit better. We start with a header row. Basically, it describes the data that we're looking at. The first column is ID and the second is parent ID. So we know that there's some kind of hierarchical relationship amongst the rows in this particular data set. The next column is element. And it looks like every single row here has an element. You could say it's required. So this is really what we're looking at, elements that are hierarchically arranged. And then there's a number of other attributes which seem to be optional. Okay, So that's the basic data set that we're looking at. Easy to understand, right? Guess what? It's the same data set we saw on the HTML page before. If I rearrange these rows using the element column as the main attribute, and then use these parent-child relationships to lay out the elements hierarchically, and finally, we take these other attributes and put them in line with the element, it would look like this. It's the same, but different. Just another data set. And with some practice, you'll feel right at home with it. We can see here the same kind of relationships that we saw on the page before. If I show you this one last time, we have HTML is the first row. Next, we have head. And you can see that head is beneath HTML. Title is linked up to head. Going down a little bit, we have form and, or I, I'm sorry, body, and body links back up to HTML. When we look at it here, it's actually easier to see the relationship. When people are new to web development and they hear the term DOM or document object model, they can be a bit intimidated. But you're already used to working with objects in the database, and it's really very similar. The database object that's most like the DOM is a table. Once again with our data set. If we take our data set here and move it into the database, we get something like this, a table. It's through tables and SQL that we select rows perform inserts, updates, and deletes, and even add new columns or remove columns. The same is true when we take our HTML web page and move it into a browser. The page comes to life. This is how our browsers see the web page. And through the DOM and JavaScript, we can do the same things to our HTML web page. We can select elements, insert, 
update and delete them, even add and remove attributes. Dan, I have a question myself. Is jQuery really fun? <laughs> I'm sorry. I think it, it is, but I'm, just I'm a bit of a geek. Said, you're biased. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let you go. Thank you. <laughs> fair, fair question. So, when you do database development, uh, it's important that you use the right tools. And many of you are familiar with tools like Toad or SQL Developer. We use these tools for all kinds of important functionality. A lot of that is listed here. Things like debugging code manipulating objects. Really important to use the right tools. Some of you may still be using SQL Plus as your main development IDE. I think you get the point. In the web world, things are no different. We need to use the right tools for the job. I liken Firebug to the IDEs we use in the database world. Firebug is a plugin for the Firefox web browser. So that browser is a prerequisite. But with it, with the combination, we get all kinds of functionality to help us work with our web pages. In fact, a lot of the functionality we see listed here is the same that we saw for the SQL IDEs. The ability to debug code, manipulate elements, or as they're often referred to, objects. If you're not doing web development with these tools, well, why would you do that to yourself? Let's take a moment to explore some of Firebug and get an idea of what it's capable of. Here's the web page we've seen a few times now. Um, behind the scenes, it is the content we saw on the HTML web page. And of course, as you can see, I'm in Firefox. Down below, you can tell I have Firebug installed. You see this little bug. And when I click the bug, it essentially turns Firebug on. First thing you'll notice with Firebug is that we have a couple of tools over here on the left. Next to those, we have a number of tabs. These tabs can be disabled by default when you first start working with the product. You'll need to enable them. And the way you do that, you just click on the tab and you'll see these arrows here and you'll see the enable and disable. So if they are disabled and you go to them, just click on that and you can enable and disable them. First tab we'll take a look at is the console. In most IDEs like SQL Dev, people are used to using DBMS output dot put line. Right? It allows us to see output from that buffer. Well, in JavaScript, we have something similar. We have what's known as the console. Not all browsers support console yet. Most of the newer ones do. Firefox does, and Firebug allows us to see it. This is the equivalent of DBMS output dot put line. We'll do another Hello World example. You can come down here and hit Run. And you can see the code that was executed and its output. Just ignore that return value. So a lot of the same stuff you're already used to, and this particular technology can be used for warnings, debug info, and things like that. If you don't see, after you install Firebug into Firefox, if you don't see this window, it's closed by default. Just look in the lower right-hand corner. Click that arrow to open it up. Otherwise, it's available at the bottom as a single line. 